This video is created by Jagrat Creation. It is on liquidation of company. I want to solve one sum here before you. On liquidation of a company, this is the sum which I intend to solve. The sum was asked in 1990 by the Institute of Chartered Accountants of India. The summarized balance sheet of Pactu Limited as on 31-2016, being the date of voluntary winding up, is as under. On the asset side, you are given land and building, plant and machinery, stock and trade, book rates, profit and loss account, debit rates, like 72,000. Cumulative preferences, 10 lakh. 5,000 equity shares of rupees 10 is 60 per share paid up. 5,000 equity shares of rupees 100 each. 50 per share called up and paid up. So, 10 lakh plus 3 lakh plus 2 lakh 50,000. Total 15 lakh 50,000 is the total paid up capital. So, 15 lakh 50,000 is the total of these three numbers. Notice it. 15 percent debentures. Preferential creditors, bank overdraft, train creditors. The preference share dividend is in areas for two years. On th by 31 3 2016, assets realized follows. So, this is the realized value of assets. Expenses of liquidation amounted to 54,000. Remuneration of the liquidator is 3% of the realization. Income tax payable on liquidation 44,500. Assuming that the final payment was made on 31 3 2017, prepare liquidator's statement of accounts. Now, liquidator is appointed in a winding up process. Winding up process means a legal process by which the existence of a company is brought to an end. For that purpose, liquidator is appointed. The job of a liquidator is to realize the asset and make payment to the creditors of the company and to the claimants against the company as prescribed in the law. So, liquidator has to pay as per the mandate of law. So, first payment is to be made to fully secure creditors, then liquidation expenses and remuneration, then preferential creditors, then debenture holders who holds floating charge over the assets of the company, then unsecured creditors, then preferential capital, then equity shareholders have to be paid. Now, on the basis of this information, let me start preparing liquidators' statement of final statement of account, receipts and payment. The liquidator has to start with opening cash balance that is not there in this sum. Assets realized that I write on the receipt side. Land and building 984,000. Stock in trade. Plant and machinery 712,000. Book dates 1191,000. This is the total value realized for the assets. From, the, from this realized value, you have to pay, first of all, to fully secured creditors. Just find out if at all there be any fully secured creditors. So, there are no fully secured creditors. So, amount paid to fully secured creditors is nil. Next, you have to pay the liquidation expenses 54,000. Then, pay liquidators remuneration 3% of realization. So, that works out to be, 30 lakh 50,000 into 3%, 91,500 liquidators remuneration to be paid. After that, you are required to make payment to preferential creditors. Preferential creditors are given to you 1 lakh 5,000. Over and above, income tax payable on the date of liquidation, any income tax or due to, towards the government payable within one year before the date of liquidation are considered to be the preferential creditors. So, 44,500 is also a preferential creditor. So, this is the total payment made to be made to the preferential creditors. So, this income tax liability is considered as a preferential creditor. After preferential creditor, you have to pay the debenture holders. 4 lakhs is the amount payable to debenture holders. The date of liquidation is 31st of about 2016 and the final payment was made on 31st of about 2017. So, payment made to debenture holders one year later from the date of liquidation should we pay them one by one year's interest. The answer to the question, if we have got sufficient funds to pay unsecured creditors, then we should pay interest till the date of payment to the debenture holders. So, let me work out the cash balance. Total receipts. Minus all these payments are deducted therefrom. So, closing balance 
with me is 23,55,000. If you look at the creditors are just 7,42,000. So I have got sufficient funds to pay the creditors. So I afford, I can pay or I have to pay one year debenture interest. So 4 lakhs into 15%, one year 60,000 is the interest to be paid to debenture holders. After making payment to debenture holders, I should make payment to creditors. So 60,000 is added. So this is the cash balance. Now who are the creditors? Bank overdraft and trade creditors. These are the creditors which I am required to pay. That is nearly 10 lakh 45,000. I have got a cash balance 22 lakh 95,000. So I can pay these unsecured creditors bank overdraft and trade creditors. So after making payment of this 10 lakh 45,000, next payment is to be made to preference shareholders. So preference shareholders are to be paid 10 lakhs. The preference share dividend is, dividend is in years for two years. So two years dividend is to be paid to them. So 10 lakhs into 12% for two years. 2 lakh 40,000. This is the payment made to preference shareholders. So after making payment to this preference shareholders, who is left now? I am required to distribute the remaining balance to the equity shareholders equitably. Very possible. So that loss to the various categories of the equity shareholder is identical, uniform. So let me find out the cash available for equity shareholders. So unsecured creditors and preferential creditors total is added. So now I have got a cash balance of only 10,000 rupees. How to distribute 10,000 rupees to these two categories of shareholders? For that, I advise to the student to prepare memoranda cash account. Wherein I write the balance of 10,000. I demand the last call on the equity shares. So 50,000 equity shares, 160% paid up. So let me demand the 40 rupees last call. So they become 100% paid up. So notional last call, actual last call is not to be demanded. Imaginary last call is to be recorded just to find out the net payment to be recorded in liquidator statement. So notional last call demanded on A type. 5,000 equity shares, 150 per share paid up. So 50 rupees could be demanded. So this is the demand. So total amount. Now I have got 4,60,000. So 4,60,000 is a last call demanded on both the type of shareholders. So both the type of shares are now 100% paid up, fully paid up. So there is no disparity amongst these two type of shareholders because of this notional last call. Now I have to work out the refund per share. Both the shares are of is 100 is 100 is. So I can work out the refund per share. So 460,000 divided by number of shares. So 46 is the refund per share. So on A type of share, 5,000 into 46 is the nostal refund. 5,000 into 46 is a nostal refund on the second type of shares. So 2 lakh is demanded. Nostal demand is 2 lakhs. Nostal refund is 2 lakh 30,000. So net payment to be made to this A category of shareholder is just 30,000. So 2 lakhs and 2 lakh 30,000. So 30,000 is to be paid to A category of shareholders. So 30,000 is paid. 2 lakh 50,000 notional demand. 2 lakh 30,000 is the refund. So I am required to demand 20,000 from this B category of shareholders. So B category of shareholders will pay me 20,000 rupees. I have already a balance of 10,000 plus this 20,000 rupees are received by me. So 10 plus 20, 30. 30 is the payment made to equity shareholders. Now my liquidators receipts and payment should agree. So receipts are equal to payment. This is how liquidation, liquidator statement agreement takes place. So 30, 30 like 70,000 total of receipts, total of payment. So shareholders are distributed equally. How they are distributed equally? Here, 20,000 is demanded. So on 50,000 shares, on, I'm sorry, on 5,000 shares, 20,000 rupees, so 4 rupees are demanded. So they have already paid 50 and 4 rupees are demanded. So 54 is the total sacrifice made by B category. Now A category has already paid 60. So they are required to be refunded 6 rupees. So their loss also becomes 54. So 5000 into 6, 
that is 30,000 is the payment made to A category. This is how it can be explained. Now to find out the net amount to be recovered and paid, we have prepared memoranda cash account for your understanding and worked out the refund per share because face value of both the type of share is same. So I have tried to explain you this sum, wherein this pre not only this working note, various working notes are also made by me. I feel that you have followed all these things. Thanks to